Now, if you're anything like me, you like bass. <laughs> Who am I, you ask? I am Will from Ghost Hack, and today I'm going to talk to you about sub bass, the good stuff. <laughs> Now, the concept of sub-bass is really not a complicated one. All you do is you take a sound that has, you know, low frequencies to it, and you want to be very rich in sub-bass frequencies. You add an EQ, maybe looking something like this, and you roll off all that really deep low end, because maybe, you know, you're working on some nasty growl or like a Reese bass or something else that you want to have sub-bass, and uh, the sub just gets really nasty because you're doing all your effects to make the sound itself sound cool, but the sub is just muddy, it's not nearly as clean as you want it to be, and it sounds like garbage. So you cut that out and you replace it with just a sub bass that will probably end up looking something like this right here. And of course, when you combine these two together, you get something that looks a lot cleaner and sounds a lot cleaner too. So I'm gonna show you how to make that bottom layer of sub bass and make it sound clean and heavy and big and thick and juicy and all the good things you could use to describe a sub bass. And since I'm making this whole video just about sub bass, I'm going to talk to you about how you can make sub bass using just FL Studio plugins, specifically Citrus, how you can make sub bass in Serum and how you can do this in Ableton as well. Now for the Ableton portion, I'm probably just gonna throw up uh, some screenshots and refer back to what I tell you in Citrus and Serum because the uh, process in Operator is very, very similar. But I'm also gonna show you a little bit of side chain and how I would go about side chaining my sub bass versus other sounds. So I think that is plenty of explanation for what we're about to do here. Let's get it. I have just some basic uh, dubstep drum step drums. This could be used for pretty much any genre that you want to have uh, heavy hitting drums to. These are just drums from uh, Ghost Hacks Ultimate Producer Bundle 2020. And what I want to do is add a sub bass. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cover it in Serum. And I'm going to uh, open up Serum here and I'm going to show you how to do this because the way to make it heavy and super clean is actually not too complicated. You just have to know what you're doing. So the first thing you want to do is uh, make Serum bigger in my case. But the second thing you want to do is to go into this wavetable editor and you will see that there's a saw wave here boom and you'll see all these weird lines right that say bin and then they have a number beside them and you can zoom out and see that there's just a crap ton of these but basically these are all the harmonics that make up the waveform itself like for example let's say i uh, just draw this line and remove it you can see that i'm removing those harmonics and now they're gone and all these little lines all these bins represent a sine wave in like an eq spectrum like let's say i were to add one sine wave down here you can see it's one big sine wave, and if I play it, you can see on this little EQ up here, there's just one harmonic, it's playing one sine wave. And I could have an, add another sine wave up here. And now you can see there's a smaller sine wave traveling along the shape of the bigger sine wave. And now you can see there's two harmonics up here. So you can almost treat this like an EQ spectrum, and you can add in your sine waves together, and when you get a bunch, that's what kind of builds a sound. And when you have something like a saw wave here, it just goes like this all the way down, and it eventually looks like this, where it's all very smooth. And you can see all the harmonics. What we want is just specific harmonics down in the low frequencies. Essentially what a sub bass is, is just this. Played very low. I'm gonna play it up a little higher so you can kind of hear what I'm doing. But that's essentially what a sub bass is, just played really low. But what I want to do is I want to make my sub bass thick. I want to make it thick and juicy. I want to give it some other harmonics along with this. And the best way to do this is just to add subtle harmonics here. Just maybe a subtle sort of harmonic fade out. You can adjust the levels of all these. And now you can hear and see up top that this has more than just one harmonic. There's a lot. There's extra ones sitting up top, and that's very good. That's gonna add a lot of thickness to your sub bass. Because when you play this thing low, you wanna be able to hear and feel the rumble. Let's turn this up. There it is. Like you can feel almost a rumbling sensation other than maybe like just the one sine wave right here. Like this would be the normal sine wave that we had before. And this would be our new sub bass. 
And that kind of thing is very, very good because you can add those extra harmonics that you will hear on uh, speaker systems that maybe don't output, you know, really clean, pure sub bass. Maybe they just output just, you know, generally low frequencies and they don't, you don't get the perfectly clean sub. You'll be able to hear it on those systems as well. And also this could kind of go back to what I was showing you before about these EQs, how, you know, you'd cut like this generally for the other sound that you were working on that you wanted to take out the sub bass from. There's a whole area in there down low that is not taken up and is made for the sub bass. If you fill that entire area with just one frequency like that, it's probably not gonna sound very rich, but if you add more frequencies in the middle here like we were doing before, it'll look a little more like this and it'll sound more full and together as one. And now the only other, and now the only other thing I'm actually gonna do to this right here, is add a little bit of attack and release because you can hear that we have some clickage going on. You, you can even see up there, there's nasty harmonic, harmonics coming through. So we just wanna raise this attack. Not too much, I'd say under 10 milliseconds. And then raise the release slightly. For me, the release can be a little bit shorter. You just wanna go until you don't hear any more clicking. I think that's pretty good. And another good thing about adding a little bit of release to your sub bass is I like to do really fast notes sometime. If you like put down really short and really fast notes in your piano roll, you won't get any clicking there. There's always gonna be a little bit of release to just slide out of those really small notes, especially you have if you have like a, a bass that's just brrr, just going really fast and you wanna uh, make the sub bass mimic that pattern. You're not gonna worry about clicking and stuff in this because there's a little bit of release. So there's always gonna be a slight fade out, you're still going to be able to feel that sub bass playing. Next, we're going to open up Citrus here. And Citrus is my favorite to use in FL Studio for sub basses, not because it sounds any better, just because, you know, maybe it takes up a little less CPU and uh, it, it's convenient for people who don't have Serum. So uh, all we have to do is once we select the default in this presets tab, like I just did up there, it's going to completely initialize the patch. You already start out pretty loud with this. So I'm going to bring this pitch down here to 0.5. That's gonna put us in sub bass range. And then all you have to do is go into the oscillator and bada bing, bada boom, you're presented with a very similar image as you would have seen in Serum just a second ago. And you have these harmonics. Of course, that would make a terrible sub bass. What we want to do is we want to add these subtle harmonics right here and just fade these out a little bit. It should just sort of look like this. And then once you have this, you can just go into volume, uh, turn on the envelope, and then just kind of shape this to where you want it. Let's say up here so it doesn't decay. A little bit of release. Just a little bit and then a slight bit of attack. It's a very smooth sub bass. So there's a sub in Citrus that wasn't hard as well. And you'll hear that these subs are very similar just because it's essentially exactly the same things going on. You may get a slight different tonality depending on which plugin you're using, but for the most part, this concept is very much the same. And it's very much the same in Ableton as well. When you open up Operator, you will see a similar shape to what you see in uh, Citrus and Serum as well. And all you have to do is just create that shape that I was showing you before. It's gonna look something like this in Operator. If you can draw this, in in operator it's going to do exactly the same thing then you can add a little bit of attack and release there as well it's very simple concepts and you can use many other plugins other than just these two but just a note, if you are using FL Studio, another reason I think to use Citrus is you can activate the slide notes in FL Studio, which can be very good for sub bass. If you're laying down the sub, let's say you have it in F or something like that, and you want this thing to make a slide, maybe make a slide up with another bass or something else weird. It's very, very easy to do that with FL Studio slide notes. So, you know, taking advantage of that with Citrus is a big plus. You don't have to automate any weird pitch bend. It looks pretty good and sounds very good. And now I'm just gonna lay down a little sub bass thing here and just kind of throw some things around so we can work with the side chain. So 
So there's a dumb little bass pattern with drums on top of it. Now we can work with the side chaining. Now this, uh, I guess, will depend on the plugin you're using, but no matter which plugin you're using, this is generally how I would go about it. I uh, would recommend doing uh, volume automation, like as far as ducking, instead of actual side chaining with a compressor. Side chaining with a compressor, or in this case, like maybe Fruity Limiter or something like that, still works out pretty well. Like you can still get some good side chaining results, but when you use a tool such as a LFO tool or volume shaper or just the automation clips in FL Studio, it tends to be a lot cleaner when you're doing that uh, side chain automation and it allows you to do some cool stuff. Now I know this is not an efficient way to sidechain, you know, all your things in FL Studio, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a limiter on the sub bass so I can talk about uh, the sidechaining itself and what I would actually want to do when it comes to just the sub bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ceiling of this limiter all the way up and I'm going to just create an automation clip for this gain right here and I'm going to make it nice and small because this is going to be my little sidechain clip. And also for utilitarian purposes, I'm just going to copy this value right there at 50%. Then I'm going to paste it on the max value, right? So the max value this automation clip can go to is 50%. So all the way up is now at 50%. So we're going to stay right here, right there. And this means that I can just use the whole automation clip. So now I want to create a shape right, for this side chain. And I, this is a sub bass tutorial, not a side chain tutorial, so I'm not gonna go too much into the theory of why this shape should be exactly the way it is, but what I want to do for the side chain itself is just kind of mimic the shape that the kick has. Especially if you bring it over the kick, you can see the kick fades out about there. After that, there's pretty much nothing. There's not much of consequence. So if you do a shape sort of like this, it's going to be beneficial for your sub bass because now once the kick bass fades out, the sub bass is fading in at generally the same speed and it works out very well. Now this side chain shape would not work good for other instruments because you know the majority of the high frequencies of the kick have faded out past this point. There's just a little click and there's other areas that need to be filled by the other instruments, but not by the sub bass. So we're allowed to have a more dramatic side chain when it comes to the sub. So it seems as though the kick itself starts to fade out about here. Past here, it starts to kind of fade down. So I'm gonna add a point here. Maybe do something like that. And then you can mess around with the curves. Like obviously this right here sounds better than this. Like that's just got a weird tonality. Now when it comes to the side chain of the snare, that could be a little different. It depends on the style of music you're making. If you just have like a trappy snare, just like a something like that, it doesn't have any real lower, you know, strong mid frequencies. It doesn't have a punch to it. It's more of a, it's more of a clicky kind of clappy snappy snare. In that situation, I don't, I wouldn't side chain to the snare at all. But if you are doing something like uh, dubstep or drum step or like something neuro drum and bass where you have like a low snare that kind of punches a little more sort of like I do here then I'd recommend maybe doing a little bit of side chaining because the snare does have power and it's kind of good to show that in the sub bass as well. Let's see, we do want to make a different shape here though because you can audibly hear that gap. That just doesn't sound good. All we want to do is we want the sub bass to just drop in power just for a minute. So if we're side chaining it differently to this snare, then what I would want to do is I'd want to definitely bring this point in a lot, just really tighten this up. Now keep in mind, I'm not doing this because there are frequencies in the sub bass that are colliding with the snare. All I'm doing is if the sub bass drops out a little bit and the snare punches through, it gives the listener a sense of more power behind the snare itself. It's like the snare is so powerful that it's kind of ducking down that sub a little bit in a much, a much shorter space. Again, don't make it nearly as large as this kick, but just for a, a small amount of time, the snare is ducking down that sub, which really gives the snare just like this, this sense of power in the mix, which is very very good thing. But honestly, I don't even know if the side chaining should really be the main takeaway from this video. The main takeaway from this video should probably be if you see a tool that looks like this, then they can be extremely helpful for making very clean and very heavy sub bases. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Will from Ghost Hack and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing.